Hi, Keith Townsend from the CTOvisor.com. We're going to talk a little bit of cloud watching in HCI. You know what? I'm going to be straightforward. The ideal of this came from Nutanix's quarterly earnings. They kind of market themselves as a cloud company. They had me, I have to tell you, it, it, I don't know if it bothered me, but it had me a little bit curious to think through what's private cloud in an enterprise and what's the true definition of a cloud company in today's landscape. And why does it even matter if a company markets themselves as a cloud company company versus a traditional web scale, hyper-converged infrastructure company? Why is it important and why should we care about it? And I think the answer to that question has to do with user perception. Wikibon did a great job earlier in 2016 of defining true cloud. The definition more or less means that for a private infrastructure, Brian Gracely, I think, did most of this work in which he said that enterprises, which I work for one, would like to go out to the market, look to a vendor like a Nutanix, SimpliVity, Microsoft, or Dell, in a Dell EMC, and basically buy a private cloud. That would be a modular, fully vertically integrated solution in which I bring it into my data center. I forklift it, bring it into my data center. When I need to expand it, it will have HCI type of capability where I can just expand it by plugging in more modular systems and consume that. Well, what do we have today? And what is a system like Nutanix, SimpliVity, Cisco's Hyperflex? What capability from a cloud perspective does that give the enterprise? Let's talk about the models of consumption in the enterprise first. First, we have the user and how they consume enterprise services. Traditionally, our user would go to the enterprise data center to consume services. Oracle, SAP, Exchange, traditional MRP type of applications, those FET clients, they'd be at their desktop, they connect to the enterprise data center, consume these services. Developers, when they wanted to develop applications, maybe in this new virtualization area, era, they request a VM that might take, let's say, I don't know, 15 days to 60 days, depending on the enterprise. They build their apps, and you know, that's just how it worked. That's if it worked well. Well, in the digital transformation age or the digital business age, that's not fast enough. Matter of fact, if it was 15 days to 60, that may in fact be fast enough, but it simply isn't. So today, users bypass that legacy infrastructure and go to AWS. So they have this dual bimodal approach to consumption of IT. They consume their traditional infrastructure and applications via the data center model, that traditional data center model. They may still request VMs and infrastructure and rules and networking that allow them to integrate with the, the legacy applications within their data center. But for things that they want to move extremely fast that don't have a dependency on the legacy applications, they bypass that and go to what they call today cloud, AWS. So what does it mean to an end user when they want to consume cloud on premises? And again, I think this has changed dramatically over the past 15 to 18 months. An end user, when they think about cloud, they think some type of AWS consumption model on premises. So they want that same experience, that same cloud experience they, that they get with AWS. They want that internally. What does HCI give us? So if we build HCI, we install our nodes. That time to value metric that HCI vendors like to talk about. The, we go through procurement, go through our change management process. Instead of taking months to deploy physical infrastructure, we have physical infrastructure up and ready within a couple of days after procurement. It's online and ready co to consume. 
but ready for whom to consume. IT isn't the focus when it comes to providing cloud services. IT consumption when it comes to cloud is a user-centric model. Users consume cloud, IT builds the cloud. So HCI, our cloud may be built on these HCI nodes, but a critical piece that most, most if not all HCI vendors are lacking, and most of the big ones, are, is that direct relationship with the end user. HCI vendors customers are enterprise IT. AWS, Azure, Google Compute, their direct cu customers and many times is the end user. So what's missing is this true private cloud on top of our HCI or even traditional infrastructure. I think the leader right now in this market is Azure with their Azure Stack solution. It's not out on the market yet, it's in preview. Oracle claims that they have something out on the market that's similar in concept, but I don't know if it's like this HCI, this true private cloud that's easy to expand. I have to talk to Chuck Hollis about that one. But basically, we need this stack above on top of the HCI infrastructure before I'm willing to say that this is true private cloud. Private cloud is a, a concept in which we make the relationship between the end user and IT frictionless as we do with AWS. Until a company says that they're providing this type of capability where they're encompassing the infrastructure and the interface to the end user, I'm a little bit hesitant to say you're a cloud company. You might have capability in which you're providing cloud cloud infrastructure, but that's no different than what Dell EMC, HPE, Fujitsu, Lenovo, IBM does with their existing hardware stacks. All of those software products, Netflix, Net, NetApp, Pure, SolidFire, all the traditional storage vendors all sell into cloud providers. In that case, they would be cloud classified cloud companies too. No, it's this service level that interacts with the end user that's truly needed before you can say you're a true cloud company. That's my opinion, and I have fun talking to you guys about it. You, you wanna hear more from me? Follow me on the Twitter. If you don't agree with me, follow me on Twitter. Let's have that conversation at CTO Advisor on Twitter. You can listen to the blog, or actually listen to the podcast, and subscribe to the blog, thectoadvisor.com. Talk to you guys next Tech Talk.